Hi, it's Karishma here from MapleSoft. Today we're going to explore the concept of function transformation using MapleLearn. To transform a function, you take a base or parent function and apply a set of parameters to move it around a graph. The general form for the equation of a transform function can be seen here. Notice that the general form includes reference to a base or parent function. Here you can see f of x. Essentially, you're applying a set of parameters to the parent function to transform it. The parameters can be used to translate, stretch, compress, and even flip the function. Now, there are four parameters that we can apply to the parent function to transform it. Let's explore each parameter one at a time and see how it modifies um, the transformed function. So over here, I've defined my parent function, f of x, and I've assigned it the value of x cubed. And here is my transform function, g of x. And you'll see that it contains the parameters a, b, h, and k, which we will control using the sliders over here. Now, the two easiest parameters to understand are k and h. So let's start with those. The k parameter, it shifts the graph of the transform function up or down um, with respect to the parent function. So if k is positive, you'll notice that the transform function, seen in blue, moves up. And if k is negative, the transform function, which is the blue curve, moves down. Now the h parameter, it moves the graph of the transform function to the left and right. If h is positive, it'll move the graph to the right by h units, so in this case, six units. And if h is negative, it'll move the graph to the left by h units. Now a word of caution. When h is negative, the sign before the h in the general equation for transformation becomes positive. So look at this sign over here. Now, if you're looking at just the equation of transformation, it's easy to think that the value of h is positive and arrive at the conclusion that the transform function moves to the right. Try to avoid this temptation. Now the parameter a. It can be used to stretch or compress the graph of the transform function vertically and to flip the graph about the horizontal x-axis. As we begin to move the slider for a, I want you to imagine that you're able to grab onto the ends of the transform graph. As we change the value of A, we'll be stretching or compressing the graph vertically, which will cause the graph to move towards or away from the X axis. So let's see what happens as we change the value of A, and let's pick a value between zero and one. So let's say A is 0 0.9. Again, imagine that we're holding the edges over here, and you'll notice that the graph of the transform function is starting to compress towards the x-axis. You can see this, it becomes more evident as this value approaches zero. Oops, there we go. So as we approach zero, it starts to compress or squeeze towards the x-axis. And this is known as vertical compression. And we say that the transform graph is compressed vertically by a factor of a. Now, as the value of a becomes greater than one, you'll notice that the graph of the transform function is stretched vertically away from the x-axis. So here, as a becomes greater than one, you'll notice that we are stretching the transform graph away from the x-axis, away from the x-axis. And as the value of a gets progressively larger, the graph of the transform function continues to stretch away from the x-axis. Continue to stretch away. This is known as vertical stretching. And we say that the graph, the transformed graph, is stretched by a factor of a, so in this case by a factor of three. If a becomes negative, so let's make this negative over here. The graph of the transform function will stretch or compress vertically depending on the absolute value of a, 
So in this case, the absolute value of A is three. So it will go ahead and you'll see that you'll end up with a vertical stretch. But in addition to that, the result will be flipped about the y-axis. So notice here that the result is going to be flipped about the y-axis. Now let's reset A to one and let's see what happens as we change B. Now the B parameter, it can be used to stretch and compress the graph of the transformal function horizontally and to flip the graph about the vertical y-axis. Again, as we begin to move the slider for B, imagine you are able to grab onto the ends of the transform graph, but this time, as we change the value of B, you will be stretching or compressing the graph horizontally, which will cause the graph to move towards or away from the y-axis. So let's see what happens if we modify the value of B and set it to something like 1.1. Notice over here that the graph of the transform function is being compressed horizontally towards the y-axis. You can see this, it becomes more evident as B becomes bigger. You're compressing it towards the y-axis. This is known as horizontal compression. And we say that the horizontal compression, um, or the graph, I should say, of the transform function is compressed by a factor of one over B. Now, as I decrease the value of B and I go past one, so if I pick a value between zero and one, you'll notice that the graph of the transform function in comparison to the parent function, it's going to stretch away from the vertical axis. So let's see. We're gonna, oops, let's try that here. We're gonna, it's gonna stretch away. Notice how it stretches away from the vertical axis. It stretches away from the vertical axis. Um, and this is known as a vertical stretch by a factor of one over B. If we become, if we make B negative, just make it negative three. The graph of the transform function will stretch or compress vertically depending on the absolute value of B, and the result will be flipped about the x-axis. So it's going to be flipped about the x-axis. Now, understanding how the graph of the transform function changes as we modify the A and B parameters can be tricky. However, with some practice, you'll get the hang of it. Test your skills by changing the parent function and predicting how the graph of the transform function will look for different values of A, B, H, and K. And then go ahead and use the sliders to confirm your prediction. Thanks again and good luck.